All right, I have Cameron, the man, Zand, in Viva Las Vegas, baby. And it was so great. I have so many great young coaching clients who want to become dominant luxury brokers in highly competitive luxury markets. And let me tell you, that is not easy. As a coach, I get the requests all the time, Cameron. And so I'm so thrilled to have you on to talk a little bit about kind of what are some of the best practices from you going from a, a good agent to becoming one of the best luxury agents in Las Vegas. And you just broke a couple records, right? I was looking at your, your bio and I was like, boom, broke the record. What was it? A, you give, give us the quick record breaking breakdown in the last couple of years because you crushed it on a few things. And then yeah. we we'll begin. Humbling, humbling experience the other day. I was just so humbled. You know, this whole year I was kind of working and, you know, the whole COVID, I didn't sell a house for three months. I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? And then literally this becomes my, my best year ever. But yeah, we just sold a, um, uh, the most expensive home in, in Henderson, Nevada for the last 13 years. It was a $11,250, $250 and $1. So yeah. someone had eleven two fifty, but we made our price that one dollar, so we can take that that record. Nice. And um, yeah, it was the second most expensive in Southern Nevada this year. Um, a couple and then last years. year you did another one, right? There was like a yeah, couple. I did a, another uh, eight figure sale to a, a very very successful athlete. It was a, a ten million dollar sale. That was a, another second most expensive. Um, I sold the most expensive condo ever back in 2016. I sold the most expensive home in 2017. So yeah, man, I, I was able to build up some really good, you know, noteworthy sales over the last five years. Awesome. Awesome. So, and we're going to dig into that because, you know, when Cameron and I were, you know, hanging out in Vegas a long time ago, I forget, it's, uh, maybe like 10 years ago or something like that, we were playing Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow Quadrant. And he's out there going and buying, you know, four plexes for a hundred grand, you know, and I'm spending two grand on a, you know, on a table in Vegas being a moron, <laughs> right? So <laughs> big difference between you and I, right? But I, you know, I, I want to take people back because, you know, you know, and I, and I said this to you, you know, I had success delivered to me on a silver platter as a fairy. Here you go, Patrick, eat from the table, get after it, right? You definitely did not have that base as far as I know. So what is your, you know, your kind of origin story into the real estate business with your family? Like, did you come from the wealthy, successful family? What's the deal? Yeah, man, <laughs> it gets a little emotional for me. Yeah. So just hold on. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, you know, growing up, we were in like foster homes and you know, my mom was, uh, you know, alcohol, drugs, different guys in the house and, uh, you know, child protection services relocated us with my grandparents when I was like, you know, 16 and he owned a landscaping company and, and I started working for him, shoveling rock, planting plants. And then, um, you know, I was, you know, 19 years old, I, I saved up some money and then that's when like the real estate market was on fire. And um, one of my uh, relatives, uh, girlfriends at the time sold me a house and, and made a bunch of money and I was like shit she can do that I can do that and you know she kind of took me under her wing and, and that's how I got in but literally I don't come from this I, I didn't have these circ I wasn't in any of these circles I didn't you know I wish I was but no I have to work you know twice as hard and, and smarter than uh, some of the other competitors who are you know born in these circles and they just get business from a relative or a referral yep no and thank you for sharing that, man, because, and that's what I know about you. You know, one of the things, guys, you're going to learn about Cameron is he's very disciplined and inspired to do amazing stuff. And it just shows in everything that you do, right? And that you're appreciative, you're humble. And it's like those qualities, I, you know, everybody, those are the qualities that are attractive to successful people. It's not, it's not necessarily this big flash, right? The cool glasses and the fancy car than the awesome, amazing suit. It's the humble, smart, good human being. Those usually the ones winning the game. So let's get into this, Cameron. So can you take us through a little bit of the origin story? Because when I met you, you're kind of in your early 20s, right? And uh, we're having some fun, you know, learning some NLP, working on our sales skills, having a great time. And you did get some, I think, REO accounts, then kind of REO moved out of the game, then you went back into prospecting. And then I remember there was a time where you said, hey, man, 
I'm thinking about going after the luxury market. And I was like, cool. Right. And, and I, you know, I think I said some stupid advice, like, Hey, make sure that you walk the walk and talk the talk. Like you got to have a little bit of that basic look and feel right. So you get in the door and that's probably the last thing I remember in our conversation. But, and then I found out that, you know, you kind of moved into it from there. So I'd love to fast forward everybody to this point where it's like, you're like, all right, I'm going to go figure out this luxury game. Could you take us through some of the kind of what you think are some of the big milestones and decisions and kind of best practices for some of these younger agents who really want to do it legitimately and have the ability to make it happen, right? Best practices, best advice. Take us, take us back to kind of when you started this whole game. Yeah. So, you know, I, I started up in the game, you know, 19, 20 years old, hammering the phones, prospecting for sub owners. I was crushing it. Mm -hmm. And literally I thought I was like, you know, a walking script. I knew everything. I was just really good. And then, you know, people couldn't sell their houses and I would set up six appointments a day and I was pulling comps and people were upside down and it was like, holy shit. So what I did was instead of calling, you know, people, I started calling banks and asset managers and, and that's how I nailed all those REO accounts. And then, you know, I'm in my young early twenties, you know, making almost a million dollars a year selling 300 homes a year. Right. Um, but then after that, the REOs just stopped, you know, moratoriums came and, you know, the business was changing and it was weird because I, I it wasn't changing enough where I can start prospecting again because people were still kind of upside down, but the REOs weren't coming. It was just a very awkward, awkward phase. But um, yeah, it's actually I mean, I was, interesting you brought that up. You're right. I never really thought about that. There was that window in Vegas and I, it was kind of like 2011 to maybe 13. Is that about right? Like yeah. there's just kind of a dead neutral market. Nothing was happening. Right. Yeah. And I was literally living off of my rental income properties that I, that I purchased. And then, it, you know, I was at a low point again. I had to reinvent myself. I mean, there was points I was borrowing money from, you know, some of my friends. Um, but then I was like, you know what, you know, I want to sell luxury property. If I want to make the money that I was making in my early twenties, I need to sell multi-million dollar luxury property. I don't come from luxury. I don't even look like I, you know, belong in that, that space. And, um, it took me three years before I sold my first, you know, million dollar property. But I, I knew, you know, I just needed to have a complete transformation of my life, my mindset, the way I look at things, you know, stop being cheap or this and that, like, understand and appreciate luxuries why are they you know considered luxuries so i went on this journey and i you know I, I previewed as much property as i can i started you know researching who the prominent home builders are who the architects are how homes are constructed what type of finishes quality i would go to like tile companies just to learn you know what quartz versus granite versus marble versus travertine what it looks like what it feels like what those costs look like i had to understand it and while I was, you know, brushing up on, you know, understanding how a luxury home is built, I would study the comps. Every time a million dollar property came on the market or sold or went under the contract or expired, I would study who the agent was, what was the price per square foot, what did the photos look like. Um, so I just kind of really honed that I need to build my confidence of understanding the product and understanding the market. And then that's like one phase of it. And then I started studying, you know, the art of marketing luxury products and property and before, well, before we go there before we go there because everything you just said was brilliant and it's it's like the thing that I like try and share with a lot of these guys I'm like you have to know the product better than anyone else and you know and I like that you said three years and you know you really got into it and and I find that you know the agents that kind of shortchange that they're like oh well, I know you know I've been in that community or did you know I kind of like people like really people at the top level sniff out your, your generalities and people who are faking it who really are not passionate who really didn't do their homework they sniff it out in a second right they might do you a favor but then you ain't gonna you become one of the best of the best and I think the one missing thing that I see in a lot of them in these kind of the million dollar agent shows is those a lot of those guys they know the details really really well and and you, and you get glimpses of them expressing the details at a high level and i think most people don't even see that they don't even hear it but i know that that's what it takes so i really appreciate you saying that now but let me go back before we go into the marketing side 
did you you know take luxury on as a solo agent did you join a team did you get a mentor uh give us a little bit about kind of what you think in that in that vein what, what happened there i was solo man <laughs> okay. yeah you know there's these these luxury agents who you know protect their circle and you know, I would, you know, ask questions here and there, study them on, on social media. But um, yeah, I was just, uh, I was solo. Okay, cool. All right. But real quick, you nailed it so on the dot, man. You can be dressed the part and you even know the comps, but if you don't know the, the product or the, the owner is going to sniff right through you, man, and just be like, this guy's, he doesn't get me. He doesn't hear me. He doesn't understand me. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that is very dangerous to be playing in that, right? So you got to do the work. Now, I love that. So let's jump over to the marketing side. And yeah. I got to tell you guys, if you have not been to Cameron's website, you, you know, I still check out, I love your emails. Your emails are very well designed. Um, you know, it look, the brand looks luxury. So there's a lot, like when I watch your videos, I'm super impressed. Um, I saw like one of your videos and I shot you a message on this. Um, I forget if I saw it on social, but you know, you were the first guy that when I saw a home video, it moved quickly through each one of those things. You never saw the same room kind of twice in the same, a yeah, similar yeah. angle. Right, so so it really captured my attention. And I watched the whole video where most of these kind of like, almost like a, a, a luxury virtual tour, I probably will skip out because I'm so bored because you showed me four angles of the same damn room. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm bored of seeing this thing, right? And it was too slow. So I have seen a lot of kind of the, what you've been doing on marketing between video, between email and between your website is actually super impressive. So I'd love to hear anything that you would want to share in that journey, the lessons you've learned or what's important to you today or, you know, yeah. what, what you recommend. Totally. Less is better. I mean, I don't try to show every freaking photo of, you know, some people get upset, you know, oh, or even the homeowners, you know, I have to put them in their place pretty quick when they check. Oh, you didn't include this photo. Yeah, it's because I didn't want to include this photo. And right when I say something like that to them, they're like, oh, and then they just kind of stay out of my way and let me do my thing. Don't be scared to put your clients in their place politely, not, you know, in a, in a bad way. But less is better. And, you know, like I said, when I was transitioning into luxury, I would study like Tom Ford, you know, Lamborghini, Ferrari, just kind of looking at their pieces and how simple and, and you know, intentional every photo was. And I kind of just incorporate that into selling real estate. And I think, you know, I took a, a big, you know, role in crafting or manifesting the way that other agents now market their properties in town. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just, I'm very thorough in everything I do. I, I don't just push stuff out there. Um, and you can tell. You know, print, publication, online, digital, video. Yep, nice. Cool. So <clears throat> now let's talk a little bit about, um, and I'm just curious what your perspective is on developing your personal brand, right? You know, it's been great to see you, you know, interviewed in magazines and, you know, in Vegas magazines and, you know, to get some PR, right? Any, you know, and ultimately I think everybody's goal is to kind of get that established recognition and to earn it, right? Of course. But any advice in this kind of personal branding arena, it maybe whether or not it's video or social media, anything that you you would offer up to some of these kind of people that are inspired by what you're up to? You know, you gotta for me, I just, you know, I create what I want people to see in my life or what, how I want to be perceived. And I just build around that from the photos to um, you know, my properties to my social media posts to how everything is crafted. We pu publish, a, you know, our own little magazine that features some of our properties that we mail out. Um, and I, you know, there's, there's specific intentional marketing put in there to create this persona of who I am. And, you know, that's what causes people to, you know, attract towards me and, you know, want to do business with me. So again, it's just, you know, being authentic and, and, you know, consistent. Like, I like how you said, and I got the dog in the background by, so, but you know, just said, I'll mute myself. Dog. But the, I like how you said that you did construct your brand persona. 
right? Mm -hmm. And that it's intentionally designed to cover these elements, these elements, these elements, right? And that, and I think a lot of people kind of get confused around this building their brand where they're not being intentional about the topic. Right. Anyway. Yeah, no, yeah, you nailed it right on the dot. You know, you just got to be intentional with um, and consistent with, you know, how you want to be perceived. Like, you'll see a lot of my um, professional marketing is, you know, I'm in a suit and a three piece suit, and that's just kind of my thing. Um, you know, that's how I, I show up, and people, you know, love that. I, I, love, you, I love that look, by the way. So yeah. it's, it's, it's rocking. Your, your look yeah. is, it, and it is consistent too with that brand look and feel. And, yeah, uh, it's not my competitors, you know, some of them were chucks, some of them, you know, just whatever, but they're consistent to that. They're authentic. People know when they see that person, that's what they get. But if that person who wears the chucks or the Jordans or whatever switches it up and wears a suit, it just kind of feels weird. So like, you know what you get. And I, um, yeah, so, you know, people you know, know me for that and, you know, it's attracting. So, so put it like this, people who aren't in the profession that they're in, you know, I like to think that they think if they were in a real estate, uh, real estate agent or broker, they would want to be me because I'm doing such a great job of portraying what a successful real estate broker is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some clients tell me that and I take it as a compliment because they're doctors and lawyers and stuff like that. So, again, just creating that image, that that attraction that other people, if they weren't doing what they're doing, they would want to, you know, do what you're doing. And that's yeah. how good you are. Yeah. And design it is really intention. Okay, so I wanna jump into, you went your own brokerage, hmm. right? And uh, I'd like to just touch this for a second, cause you, you, know, you know that in the, you know, the, the fairy land, we're like, don't go the brokerage route. And, and you did, and, you know, and you've been very successful, cause I've watched. So I'd love to hear a little bit about kind of, you know, what your thoughts are about this going brokerage, having the big staff, um, don't go to know. brokerage. Don't. Do it. <laughs> no, it's not for everybody. Um, I left. Uh, I was at a, at a great company. It was a you know one of the top major franchise companies, and I was there for seven years. And the environment wasn't conducive to where I was going. You know, I felt like it wasn't representing the clients who I wanted to attract and the business I wanted to get. And the environment was poor because the agents were just poor. <laughs> they would just like just kind of bring me down and it's just like, I had to get out of there. So I went to a small luxury brokerage and that was like the opposite from what I was used to professional getting checks on time. Da, 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 da. So I was like, Oh man, there's gotta be like this hybrid version. And you know, that's when I, I started luxury States international and um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and people who I, um, you know, even people that used to work here, they went up and start their own brokerage and they, you know, wish they have never done it. So if you have a good firm and, you know, the environment's great, stay put there, you know, pay a little bit of commission to your, your broker and, and ride it out because you don't have to deal with the overhead. You don't have to deal with the issues, the problems. Um, fortunately for us, we're, you know, we're, we run it really lean and mean. We don't bring on agents. I haven't brought on an agent in, you know, years. We just kind of run it more as a, as a team. But um, yeah, it's, it's not for everybody. Nice. Yeah, that makes, thank you for sharing that. Cause I agree. Right. I just, and I remember one of my mentors was like, Patrick, do not get your broker's license. And I was like, well, why? You know, like I'm Patrick Berry. Meh, 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 right. And she's like, no, no, don't do it. And, it, and I think today it's that economy of time and attention, right? So the brokerage is taking up a certain amount of your time and attention and it's taking it away from what you would want to spend more time maybe on, the brand or more networking or more uh, designing, your name, doing cool your stuff. Brokerage. Yeah, build your own name and attach your, your brokerage logo to it. But if you go somewhere, they know the name, not necessarily the brokerage. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a good job of, of promoting your brand, your team, your group, you know, they're not, it's not going to matter, you know, where you go. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Cool. All right. So best advice I got, you know, um, Let's just do, we'll just hit a couple of fire around here. I got a young something and they're like, Hey, I want to take on the luxury market. You know, what would you say is the first couple of things that I need to, you know, buckle up and get to work on? I would say understand the product, like 
know what a luxury home is. Like what are like four or five home automation systems you would see? Control four, Savant, Crestron, you know, like you need to be able to name those, understand those, who's installing those, you know, know your finishes. You need to be able to understand that. So know the product first, then understand where the comps are and what's moving and, and try to use the price per square foot as a metric to kind of understand, you know, where things are at. Cause you can have two $10 million houses, one that's 20,000 square feet and one that's 10,000 square feet and understand, you know, how are you making the adjustment? Is there views? Does this one have better finishes, better floor plan? You got to be able to have that confidence so you can go out and, and talk about it. Cause like you said, they'll sniff you out if you don't know it. Yep. Nice. Very good. And then, if I am, uh, you know, just in general, I'm young and I'm getting into the business and, uh, you know, I'm ready to hustle. I don't care if it's luxury or not. What is, what is your advice? How, and how old are you these days? I'm 34. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Which is great, man. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, some best advice to some of these young, you know, young bucks who are like, ah, oh, I'm going to go take on real estate. I'm going to crush it and make a gazillion dollars. And they're walking into 2021, which is so different than kind of, you know, what you and I started in, in the industry, right? Yeah. Very different today. And so, you know, and I'm sure you've recruited and brought on board in the last five years, newer agents and kind of these guys are like, oh, I'm going to crush this camera and, you know, hey, step aside. Yeah, I'm hungry. Let me I'm my muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Look, let me show you. My shoes are cooler than yours. You know, this is why I'm going to sell more homes than you, right? Like. Yeah. What, what is kind of what is your best advice to kind of these younger, newer agents moving into 2021? Yeah, I mean, you know, people hit me up on Instagram or Facebook and, you know, kind of ask. I, I tell them all the same thing. I say, you need to develop your center of influence and work your center of influence because that is your gold mine. You got to, you know, make contact with them and let them know you're ready. And while you're working on your center of influence, study the market, preview properties, preview new home tracks different communities whenever you get a chance yeah center of influence is gold tell me more about that what do you mean by that i mean How this is a fine center world. of influence yeah i mean it's your friends your family you know past co-workers anybody you meet you know you got to have some kind of system where you're constantly touching them you know via email or social media and not in like hey i'm a real estate agent let me throw it in your face more of an authentic way like just try to be cool with them. You know, don't, don't, don't be fake or don't feel like, oh, okay, it's Monday morning. Let me make my call to five different people. Hey, how's it going? Do you have any friends that need to buy or sell a house? Like just chat with them and let, you know, let them ask how you're doing and then you can talk. Um, yeah. but just be authentic. Yeah. The question for you side sidebar and how much has, when you started doing real estate investing, and understanding real estate investing and real estate as an asset class and how that game rolls, how much has that uh, positively or negatively influenced your, your life? Just I mean, sure. yeah, I mean, I think it positively, I mean, that's kind of how I, you know, became a multimillionaire in a sense, you know, there was an opportunity when the market was down and I, you know, I, I bought as many rental properties as I could. I wish I would have bought more. Me too. And that kind of gave me that, that, Umph, you know, boost, then I can start doing other things. And, you know, so yeah, I, I made, you know, times four times five uh, of, you know, the rental properties that I purchased and, you know, that income got me through the, the some of the tough phases. I think uh, real estate is, you know, one of the best asset classes uh, in the world and, you know, I'm a strong believer in it. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think so too. And I, and I think just from a confidence standpoint too, when you can say that you have multiple properties that you own and multiple investments that you own, would you agree with me that, you know, successful people see you differently in that moment? Yeah. I mean, oh, for sure. But you know, what's fascinating is, you know, we just, we're, we just finished um, our house and literally, you know, using some of the same subcontractors as, you know, the guys building these crazy custom homes, but I understand it more. You know, I, I really do, you know, how a pool is built from the ground up and I know what to look for and, I, you know, home, full home automation system and, you know, Mila appliances, Gaganal appliances, you know, which one's better and, you know, just all of that, just, you know, it was priceless to, to do that house that we just did. 
and um yeah it's it, you know it's it's big game changer yeah 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 it's funny i feel like when i um when carly and i kind of flipped our first home and i got to learn so much from that and yeah. then we remodeled like another one and i was like Oh my gosh, like there's so much that I didn't know that now I know. And, and now I, as a real estate professional, I can speak from more authentic position because yeah. of my personal experiences. And I don't know how I'm sure it is for you, but I know when I tell people what we've done, you know, in conversation in a real estate environment, people are like, oh, really? Like, oh, I didn't know that. And like when I tell them what I've done, then for some reason they listen to me more and they respect me more. And it's really through that personal experience, right? Yeah, and you're like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool, man. Well, you rock, man. Congratulations on all of your success. It's been, you know, an absolute blast to watch. And we're, we'll we'll get back and we'll talk some more about some of the things that you guys are up to, what you're learning, how you're doing it. Um, but I just want all these, all my younger, luxury, desiring agents to understand some kind of what your journey was, how that works, and that it's not going to be this next one year that they're going to go, you know, take over the world. It's yeah. going to get their butt to work. And if they do and they play the game the right way, they will be successful in the long haul. Sky's the limit. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Exactly. All right, man. Okay, you rock. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much for your time. And then I'll put in, you know, your your links to your website. All of your stuff will be in the description, so people can go check you out, find you on social. Are you probably more on Instagram? Would be my guess, right? Yeah, yeah either or Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. yeah. If I was if I was in my 30s, I'd be all over Instagram. But you know, I'm old now, so you know, I'm like an old guy. <laughs> okay. See you, man. You're awesome. Bye.